So, we shall be uh, starting with the applications of Fermi Dirac statistics and um, as uh, examples, so we have already seen example of uh, working out the specific heat or the temperature dependence of the specific heat which can either be you know done in a, a hand waving way of uh, you know how many electrons are or fermions are excited uh, at a temperature T and uh, their corresponding energies you multiply it by uh, KT. So, it is KT into T by TF and then uh, you uh, take a derivative with respect to T in order to get the specific heat. Now, we will uh, look at some more uh, examples or some more applications of this FD statistics and uh, uh, one of them is called a white dwarf, uh, these are stars. So, in fact, uh, the application of uh, Fermi Dirac statistics in astrophysics, this was first done uh, in the year of 1926 by Fowler. And, um, so, uh, what these stars are, we are going to say a little on that, uh, but not much. Uh, the most important thing for us is that it is a heavily degenerate Fermi gas and um, uh, we will uh, work out a limit called as a uh, Chandrasekhar limit, which uh, talks about um, you know uh, uh, the competition between the uh, gravitational force due to the mass of the stars and uh, the pressure that is uh, exerted by the fermions in order to keep it in shape. So, there is a, a sort of a limiting uh, case in which uh, the radius goes to 0 of the star which means that the star actually uh, ceases to exist or uh, in the limiting case and what would be the mass of that and so on. This is called the Chandrasekhar limit and finally, we will do a Pauli paramagnetism and show that the uh, low temperature susceptibility of uh, uh, due to electrons is uh, indeed temperature independent. Whereas, um, in our earlier discussion both uh, in the classical uh, using uh, you know the magnetic moments to uh, have values between some, uh, some value to some other value and then we have calculated the partition function and got this Langevin function. Uh, or if you do it uh, in uh, uh, treat the spins as quantum mechanically having a minus j to plus j or even minus half to plus half we saw that the high temperature specific it comes out as 1 over t which is known as Curie's law. But uh, at uh, low temperature in fact, room temperature is also low temperature which we have said several times earlier. Uh, this uh, paramagnetic susceptibility is indeed independent of temperature or it has very weak dependence of temperature which cannot be experimentally um, seen or it is uh, really so small that uh, even in the leading order you do not get any trace of the temperature dependence. Okay. So, we will uh, start with the white dwarf. And uh, in order to understand what this is, uh, if we uh, really plot uh, the brightness of the star. So, this is the brightness on the y axis of a star and this is where the white uh, spectrum lies and this is the towards the red spectrum. So, this is basically the color axis uh, of the stars. So, most of these uh, stars are uh, really they fall into this kind of a uh, band. Okay. So, all of them really fall into this space and this is called as a, a Russell uh, Hertz Prung plot. Okay. And these are really called as the white dwarfs. So, here the white dwarfs lie uh, and these are the you know the red giant the red giant stars and and like here the super giants etcetera etcetera. We shall not go into details, but what we want to say is that uh, this is where we concentrate on the uh, the white dwarf stars. Uh, they are very dim and um, the brightness is very small and the brightness is uh, because that it does not have any hydrogen content in it. So, the hydrogen is all used up and that is why this thing looks uh, you know dull and uh, with very little uh, brightness. And uh, so, why we are interested in such stars and what is the relationship between such a star and uh, the Fermi gas or Fermi statistics that we are talking about. So, um, uh, this white dwarf stars are uh, they consists of 
um, um, these are highly ionized uh, helium atom. So, these are uh, ionized and so on and uh, the reason for this ionization that uh, takes place is that uh, uh, the, the temperature at the core of the sun is of the order of 10 to the power 7 Kelvin and uh, you know how large this temperature is but even this temperature will be looked upon as zero temperature just in a while ok. And uh, but this is nevertheless uh, is a reason for these ionization of these uh, helium atoms and uh, how do we understand that because uh, the ionization energy uh, of helium or let us say first let us talk about uh, of hydrogen atom is uh, we know that if it is in the uh, ground state it is 13.6 electron volt and uh, if it is a helium atom now I will just change it over from uh, hydrogen to helium and uh, this is uh, really uh, z square times 13.6 electron volt and uh, z is equal to 2 here because uh, helium atom is 2 He 4. So, this uh, becomes uh, almost like 53, 54 um, uh, electron volt uh, 4 into 13 is 52, uh, but uh, then just uh, so it is uh, close to 53 to 54. And this uh, 53 to 54 um, electron volt is uh, something around uh, you know uh, in terms of temperature you know 1 electron volt uh, is equal to about 10 to the power 11600 Kelvin. So, an order of magnitude is like 10 to the power 4 and so 50 would be like 5 into uh, so it is like 53 electron volt is nothing but 5 into 10 to the power uh, 5 uh, k uh, and that is um, uh, much lower than uh, the ionized or the temperature of the core of the sun. So, since this is like 10 to the power less than 10 to the power 7 Kelvin. So, we have uh, the sun is rather the star comprises of highly ionized helium atom. I hope this is clear uh, because uh, we have this temperature that is required to ionize the helium atoms is about 10 to the power 5 or 10 to the power 6 since this is smaller than the core of the sun temperature uh, or the star temperature. Uh, so, it should be uh, comprising of highly ionized. Um, helium atoms ok. Now, what happens is that uh, these um, helium atoms really you know they provide uh, the stability of the star ok. So, the mass of the helium atom that provides the stability of the star and um, these uh, mass is uh, really responsible for the gravitational collapse and uh, which is uh, tried to be combated by the uh, pressure of the free Fermi gas. So, there is a competition uh, for uh, you know towards the collapse of the gas because of the mass of the helium atoms and uh, the enormous amount of fermions that are generated because of this ionization of these atoms and the electrons that are obtained therefrom are responsible for uh, for the stability. So, the in the sense that uh, there is a competition that goes on one tries to for a collapse uh, which is the helium atoms uh, the mass of the helium atoms rather and the pressure due to the fermions that try to uh, combat that ok. So, this is uh, pretty much what goes on and um, what we are uh, worried about is that that fermions that are there and the pressure due to the fermions. So, how do we treat the pressure due to the fermions? We already have a lot of experience in calculating the ground state pressure and so on and calculating the internal energy and we know that the internal energy of a gas Fermi gas or Bose gas they are related to uh, the pressure by some uh, simple expression which uh, just contains one factor the or coefficient which is either two third or one third depending upon whether you are talking about non relativistic gas or relativistic gas and so on ok. So, we have uh, so this um, suppose we have n 
fermions. and each of mass m e okay? and later we will write it as m simply m uh, and uh, we have uh, n by 2 uh, he nuclei which uh, has a m p mass of m p. So, the total mass of the star And just to remind you that uh, M p is approximately 2000 times of M. Okay? Uh, it is about 1850 or something, but uh, roughly we can take it as 2000. That is the mass of a proton uh, is 2000 times that of an electron. So, the total mass of the star uh, is really uh, M into uh, I mean N into M e. Uh, which is n into m plus uh, n by 2 into uh, 4 m p okay? and this is equal to um, n into m plus 2 m p which is nothing but equal to uh, 2 n m p because we have neglected uh, this uh, mass of the electron in presence of the mass of the proton and this is the total mass of this uh, star. All right, So, uh, that is I mean we do not know how useful it is, but at least try to see that what is the density. So, the electronic density that we have uh, and this density is important for us to realize whether we are talking about a highly degenerate gas and this density is equal to some n over v and this is like uh, um, m over um, uh, 2 uh, m p uh, that is the uh, that is equal to n um, and this is m over rho that is the density. Okay? So, this is rho over um, 2 m p. Okay? So, um, rho is experimentally found to be equal to Ten to the power seven gram per cc, and if you put it there, the electronic density comes out as, uh, and of course we know that uh, m p is uh, equal to or uh, ten to the power minus twenty four grams. So n comes out as, uh, which is the electronic density comes out as ten to the power thirty per cc, and um, uh, this uh, would you know give you a Fermi temperature because the Fermi temperature is uh, proportional to the uh, this uh, n to the power one third and uh, then um, uh, so uh, you know uh, if you put everything the Fermi temperature actually comes out to be of the order of 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 11 uh, Kelvin. Okay? So, say 10 to the power 11 Kelvin. Okay, so, let me uh, stop here for a moment and say that this uh, uh, the density to be uh, 10 to the power 30 per cc and the Fermi temperature to be uh, 10 to the power 11, this really talks about a degenerate Fermi gas, highly degenerate Fermi gas and we will write at t equal to 0 because of the reason that um, because the temperature that we are talking about inside the sun is 10 to the power 7 Kelvin. Okay? So, this is nothing but the degenerate Fermi gas at t equal to 0. Okay? But a little more information is required because we want to know whether the uh, gas is relativistic or non-relativistic in which case uh, we can find out the Fermi momentum and uh, uh, the Fermi momentum is, so I will just write a note because 10 to the power 7 is much much less than 10 to the power 11 and that is why it is t equal to 0. Okay, so, the Fermi momentum is uh, given by P f which is equal to uh, 3 n by 8 pi whole to the power 1 third. Uh, and h and this actually if you put everything it comes out as 10 to the power minus 17 uh, gram centimeter uh, second inverse. 
Okay. So, this is the Fermi momentum for this uh, gas and um, what information does it carry? It says that uh, this uh, is comparable to the, uh, the momentum that you have uh, for the relativistic case. Okay. So, comparable So, summary is we have a degenerate relativistic Fermi gas at t equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the important information that we are looking for and then what do we do with this? We will calculate the pressure and we will see that whether that pressure is able to combat a uh, gravitational collapse and uh, that will give us a limiting value for the radius or uh, we will know that how the radius you know goes to 0 of this white dwarf stars. Okay. So, um, so this uh, the energy momentum relation would be written as is uh, E equal to m c square uh, root over of 1 plus p by m c square minus 1. Okay. So, that is the energy momentum relation and then we have uh, uh, nothing but this uh, the velocity of the particle can be uh, written as uh, d e d p we are uh, giving um, so, this is the uh, groove velocity and this is uh, it is p over m divided by 1 by p divided by m c whole square whole to the power half and that is the velocity. If you put in everything you will get uh, values which are uh, relativistic velocities. Okay. So, we know that for a relativistic gas uh, the pressure is given by, so we are writing down the ground state pressure. and you know why it is a ground state because we are at t equal to 0 effectively. So, the ground state pressure is uh, given by uh, P 0 equal to one third uh, n over V uh, P V. Uh, so, this is P V by 2 and uh, this is basically the ground state expectation value of the kinetic energy. So, this is nothing but that U term. Uh, the internal energy or which is equal to the kinetic energy. So, uh, basically the at the ground state or rather of the ground state. All right. So, this is a pressure expression and uh, we can um, actually do a uh, little more and calculate the explicit value of pressure and why am I writing 0 because it is a ground state pressure. So, this is equal to 8 pi over 3 h cube uh, 0 to p f. This is how we calculate pressure and then we have this uh, the velocity and uh, uh, this 2 m and then 1 div 1 plus p over uh, m c whole square and uh, then we have uh, this as a p square d p and this integral if you uh, calculate you will get the pressure um, and we will do that. Just before that uh, one can write down the number equation uh, which is important again that is equal to n equal to 8 pi v by h cube 0 to p f and a p square d p okay? and that is equal to 4 uh, rather 8 pi v divided by 3 h cube uh, p f cube. Okay. So, let me uh, define this as equation 1 that we have to calculate and this is equation 2 and uh, so we have a fixed number of uh, fermions and um, if you want to solve 1 to uh, 
compute 1 that is equation 1. Uh, you can do a variable transform where p over m c is equal to sin hyperbolic theta and then v becomes equal to c sin hyperbolic theta. Uh, so, take a note that this is not uh, uh, sin theta, but it is a sin hyperbolic theta. So, sin hyperbolic x is equal to e to the power x minus e to the power minus x by 2 cos is just a plus on the denominator. So, this is equal to nothing but c tan hyperbolic theta. Okay. So, this is your um, v and everything and now uh, we can calculate this quantity by. Uh, so, this is your v and then uh, you have also uh, uh, all these number equations. So, the number equation becomes, so equation 2 becomes equal to uh, n is equal to 8 pi uh, v m cube c cube by 3 h cube uh, sin hyperbolic cube theta f. Uh, Let us call this as uh, 8 pi v m cube c cube by 3 h cube and let us call it as x cube where x is equal to. So, let us call this as equation 3 and x is equal to um, sin hyperbolic uh, theta f. Uh, theta f is uh, basically everything corresponding to the Fermi uh, momentum. Uh, so, that is that f carries this uh, the Fermi momentum or the Fermi velocity and so on and so forth. So, this is equal to p f over m c okay? uh, and this is equal to 3 n by 8 pi whole to the power 1 third uh, h over uh, m c. Okay? So, this is uh, your x here. So, that is the number equation and from the number equation we can uh, uh, we all again write. So, uh, equation 1 becomes equal to uh, p 0, this is equal to 8 pi m 4 c to the power 5 3 h cube uh, 0 to theta f and we have a sin hyperbolic 4 theta d theta and this is nothing but uh, pi m to the power 4 c to the power 5 by 3 h cube and some a some function a of sin hyperbolic theta f and uh, we really do not need uh, the exact form of this, but the limiting forms of a are required which I will write later. Uh, in any case when you perform this integral the sin uh, hyperbolic to the power 4 theta from 0 to theta f you get some function which is a function of theta f and let me write that as uh, pi m to the power 4 c to the power 5 and a 3 h cube and this is a of x. Okay? And this uh, we will call it as equation 4 and a x uh, will be needed. This is a priori, we do not need the full form uh, in the limits 1 x to be much much smaller than 1 and other is x is much much greater than 1 and so on. Okay. Uh, so, you know it is uh, also another information that can be given here that it a of x is equal to 1 uh, for uh, you know r uh, to be equal to 10 to the power 8 centimeter and we will see that r is actually the radius of the sun. I mean what I mean is star. Okay. So, uh, uh, several times I have called as sun, but it actually means a star uh, and we are really talking about the white dwarf star. Okay. We will uh, we'll come back to that, uh, but we leave uh, this expression for pressure uh, by equation 4 and we will come back to it in just a while. Okay. So, uh, now what we can do is that uh, you can think that you have a, a classical ideal gas and um, uh, let us for a moment uh, do not consider gravity and if we do not consider gravity uh, then we will have to enclose the box. Okay? 
because uh, if there is a pressure there or if there is a gravity that acts like the box. So, say at this moment we neglect the uh, uh, effect of gravity and we write that um, so uh, consider a spherical box and uh, and the adiabatic change in V volume so this can be either expansion or contraction um, will cause a change in energy of the gas which is given by given by this d e 0 because we are talking about the ground state this is equal to minus p 0 d v okay? and because we have taken a spherical box this is p 0 which is really a function of r the radius of this uh, box or, or this spherical box and this is a 4 pi r square d r. So, that is the r is the radius in which uh, the gas is uh, enclosed in or this container that it is enclosed in. Okay. In a real situation, you do not really need a, a box or a, a such a container that we are talking about. In fact, the gravity does the job and the change in um, the energy uh, due to this uh, change in the equilibrium configuration is still uh, given by this even if you do not consider a gas. Now, this R becomes instead of the container uh, volume or rather the radius of the container, it becomes the, uh, the radius of the star. Okay. Uh, it is also true that uh, the density of the gas may not be uniform all throughout. So, there could be a variation of density of the gas, but then we are for simplicity we are taking this density to be constant all throughout this star. Okay. Uh, so, this uh, equation uh, let us call it as equation um, 6 and uh, if we go back we probably uh, this equation 4 and uh, these let us call this as equation 5. Okay? I mean there is not an equation, but there are uh, these uh, I am just calling them as equation for uh, you know to for the sake of continuity. So, the net uh, change in energy of the system whether it is you know a, a variable density or a fixed density and so on. So, uh, the change in potential energy. So, this tells you that uh, this equation uh, however, does not give you alone uh, the net change in energy of the system because uh, if it is the only energy that is there uh, then you know the system would expand indefinitely. I mean as long as uh, n and p 0 uh, that they remain finite. Um, when they go to 0 then of course, uh, things become different. So, uh, the change in potential energy is given by let us call it as a d e uh, g, uh, g for gravitational potential energy and this is equal to say d e g uh, d r uh, and uh, d r there which is nothing but g m square by r square d r. Okay? Uh, where of course, uh, g is the gravitational constant. and um, m is the total mass of the gas. Okay. And let us call this as equation 7. All right. So, uh, what happens at equilibrium? The E 0 plus a E g this is equal to a constant. And this is the due to the pressure of the gas and which is coming from the fermions and this is the gravitational potential energy. So, at equilibrium what we have is that d e 0 that is change in this uh, the internal energy 
uh, this becomes equal to d e g and this is where what the equilibrium condition is that uh, due to the pressure of the fermionic system that we have inside the star that combats the gravitational collapse. Okay. So, uh, and of course, if you uh, now if you look at uh, equation say 7 um, or equation say for example 4 and so on um, and then uh, 6 and 7. So, if you d 0 and d g 0 if you equate and then what we have is that the p 0 there is a ground state pressure for a given the radius of the star is g m square divided by pi r to the power 4. Okay. And uh, going back to our um, definition of x which was uh, 3 n over 8 pi whole to the power 1 third and h over m c. Uh, if you remember this is called as a Compton wavelength this h over m c. Uh, so, this is 9 n by uh, 32 pi square whole to the power 1 third and h over m c divided by r where we have taken v equal to uh, 4 third pi r cube. So, what we have done is that we have written uh, 3 n by 4 pi r cube uh, or uh, I mean is the same thing it is n into 4 third pi r cube. Okay. So, if you convert this into mass then this becomes equal to 9 m divided by 64 pi square uh, m p. Uh, so, mass is uh, we use the density and uh, the volume. Uh, uh, to define the mass and this is uh, whole to the power one third uh, h over m c uh, divided by r. Uh, this is like 9 pi m over 8 m p whole to the power one third. Uh, this is uh, h uh, over m c um, uh, divided by r. Okay. Okay, so, this is uh, let us call it as equation 9. Uh, so, this is the x that we have defined sin hyperbolic theta f. Uh, now, we uh, if you replace uh, p 0 r uh, from 4, we go back to the original pressure expression p 0 r from 4 and comparing with 8. Okay. Uh, so, we have uh, a of x which we did not uh, calculate it earlier. So, this is 4 pi square m 4 c to the power 5 and g m square by r to the power 4. Okay. And this you can uh, it you can write it as uh, h over m c by r. Uh, whole cube and a g m square by r and m e square. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, uh, this uh, you have also this x which is x is given by uh, this equation 9. Okay. So, we have uh, we are slowly getting into this um, expression for um, you know this uh, uh, pressure uh, and relating the pressure to the radius of the star. So, this uh, expression if you see uh, you call it as equation 10 and this equation 10 contains equation 10 contains uh, a few interesting things it involves a proton mass. So, that is like m p. Um, then uh, radius in terms of h over m c which is called as a Compton wavelength. And of course, the gravitational energy in terms of rest mass of the electron which we have written as S m.
So, there are you know uh, interplay of uh, this uh, modern physics, uh, quantum mechanics and uh, you know uh, this uh, gravitational potential energy uh, or rather special theory of relativity etcetera. All these this relation 10 is of course, uh, useful if you put uh, m is equal to uh, 10 to the power 33 grams that is the mass of the star. Um, the proton mass uh, is equal to 10 to the power minus 24 grams uh, h over m c or usually it is written h cross over m c. This is like uh, 10 to the power minus 11 centimeter it does not matter I mean you can write h over m c h is h cross are simply related. A of x uh, becomes equal to 1 uh, for r equal to 10 to the power uh, 8 uh, centimeter. Uh, so, let us look at which we have said earlier. So, this look at two limiting cases and these two limiting cases are useful for us and one of the limiting case is that uh, you have r to be much much greater than 10 to the power 8 centimeter uh, for which we have x to be much much smaller than 1. Uh, a of x becomes equal to 8 by 5 x to the power 5 that is a leading order term and the other uh, which is r to be um, much much smaller than 10 to the power 8 centimeter for which your x will be much much greater than 1 and in that limit uh, this is uh, of course, this is uh, this becomes equal to uh, twice of x to the power 4 um, minus x square. These leading things are of use to us and uh, we will use them and uh, what we get is that uh, from equation 10 uh, in the limit of x to be much much uh, uh, smaller than 1, uh, one gets uh, the r to be equal to 3 uh, 9 pi uh, whole to the power 2 by 3 uh, 40 and h cross square m to the power minus one third and g m m p whole to the power 5 by 3 and this actually goes as m to the power minus 1 by 3 m is the mass of the star. And again from equation 10 in the other limit that is x to be much much greater than 1, we have r to be equal to uh, 9 pi by 2 uh, this whole uh, to the power 1 third and we have h cross over m c uh, and m by m p whole to the power 1 third and we have a 1 minus m by m 0 whole to the power 2 third. Uh, I will define what m 0 is and uh, m 0 is actually the uh, mass of the sun. So, this is 9 by 64 3 pi to the power half these are big expressions, but uh, there is nothing much to worry. Uh, you do not have to remember these expressions, but the uh, one is that the applicability of the Fermi Dirac statistics to this astrophysical problem is important. And then as a byproduct, which is uh, doing a lot of statistical mechanics that we already know of using those relations and trying to calculate the ground state pressure of the uh, of the fermions or uh, the free Fermi gas. Uh, we can understand that there is a competing behavior between the pressure that is given by the um, by the fermions which uh, tries to have a stability of the star whereas, the gravitation uh, tries to you know uh, collapse it. So, there is a competition and uh, this uh, competition one will win and uh, when you know the gravitational uh, force or the energy that wins then we of course, there is the star to be vanishing and that is what we are trying to find out here. So, it is uh, h cross by g that is a gravitational constant by 3 by 2 and then m p square and so on and this is equal to the m solar. So, there is the solar mass let us call this as equation this is equation 11 and this is equation 12. Okay. So, um, it is very clear from these two equations that uh, greater the mass the smaller the size is uh, also uh, from 12 uh, which is important that uh, we find that there is a critical mass uh, 
for which we have a vanishing radius. Okay, so this is important and uh, uh, so uh, this uh, is clear that if you look at equation 12, then for m greater than m0 that is the solar mass uh, r becomes imaginary and that would cast a shadow uh, on the stability of the system. Okay? So, that is the existence of the gas would be um, r cannot become imaginary. So, the, uh, the star would uh, cease to exist. Okay? And um, so, this the conclusion is that the mass of this white dwarf stars in uh, the in equilibrium must have a mass which is uh, less than the solar mass and uh, experimentally this uh, thing is observed or rather this equation 12 that you saw um, uh, that is observed and uh, uh, this has been worked out by Chandrasekhar and this called as the Chandrasekhar limit. Uh, so, uh, physically such this kind of limit exists and Chandrasekhar found that the radius of the star if it is plotted with the m by m 0 and then it would only exist if you have this just a schematic plot uh, till m, a, m by m 0 equal to 1. So, uh, below this uh, the solar mass uh, of the star the, the star exists and uh, beyond that it ceases to exist. So, this is called as a gravitational uh, collapse or this uh, the limit of these uh, white dwarf stars the radius of the white dwarf stars. So, uh, this is radius versus uh, this uh, mass, the, this is the radius versus and this is called as a Chandrasekhar limit. So, we will uh, sort of do not uh, stretch it any farther and say that uh, we have dealt with a uh, relativistic uh, degenerate Fermi gas at t equal to 0 and found out the pressure of the Fermi gas. And if you take into account that the gravitational uh, force acting on it, in that case there will be a competition between the pressure of the gas and which is trying to uh, retain its stability and the gravitational force which is trying to uh, make it collapse and uh, there is a, a uh, this competition will keep going on till the mass of the star uh, achieves the solar mass that is the mass of the sun and uh, beyond which it ceases to exist. So, this is one of the examples and uh, we will uh, do quickly another example which is called as a uh, Pauli paramagnetism. We know a lot about it anyway. Uh, we know that uh, there are spins either spin half or spin j and then uh, we have calculated uh, both classically and semi classically. So, we have this m equal to some mu 0 uh, n tan hyperbolic uh, mu h over k t. Uh, we will just call this uh, h as uh, b uh, in the following discussion. Um, now, in this uh, uh, relation or rather this uh, if you write this as mu 0 n uh, or n mu 0 tan hyperbolic this is not tan it is tan hyperbolic. So, it is tan hyperbolic uh, tan hyperbolic x x is equal to mu h by k t. Uh, so, you have uh, when you have uh, the temperature to be low. Uh, so, low temperature uh, we have uh, the, your x is much much greater than 1. So, m becomes equal to mu 0 n. You remember this because the tan hyperbolic plot is like this and it is not a good plot, but you know how tan hyperbolic plots are. So, it is equal to uh, 1. So, it gives you a value which is n mu 0 or minus n mu 0 uh, and uh, then there is a variation. So, at uh, uh, so this is uh, low temperature or high field or high h or field and then you have a large temperature um, or low field 
which is the actual case that we uh, talk about and then your um, the stand hyperbolic x is equal to x and then you have uh, m going as uh, you know uh, h into some some factors and h into 1 over t so that the uh, chi which is uh, del m del h that goes as uh, 1 over t and this is called as a curie's law so already we know about this but now we would do a, a more you know complete description of this and show that uh, that at low temperature the behavior is indeed independent of temperature okay so, uh, how do we write down the energy of such a system? Uh, so, we really want uh, chi as a function of t, as a function of t uh, for low t. This is what we want. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, let me write down the energy. The energy uh, is there are two kinds of spins uh, pointing towards the direction of the field, and uh, one is uh, opposite to the direction of the field. So, uh, in the direction of the field uh, of the external field, now let me call the external field to be B. So, this is equal to uh, this has energy uh, you know p square by 2 m minus mu b we have shown this earlier mu is the magnetic moment or you can call it a Bohr magneton and uh, you also have uh, uh, opposite uh, direction of the external field b and this is equal to uh, this epsilon equal to p square over 2 m plus mu b okay so p square over 2m is a non interacting energy and then you have uh, in presence of that uh, you have a hamiltonian which is mu dot b and uh, we are taking this uh, mu and b to align in that uh, direction and so on so the energy uh, of n such systems is a sum over momentum and then we have this p square over 2m minus a mu b uh, and uh, n p plus I will tell you what n p plus is and p square by 2 m plus mu b uh, n p minus that is uh, let us call it some equation let us start you know um, defining these equations from the beginning. So, we have um, ok. So, uh, we can call this equation as uh, this equation as equation 1. Uh, and maybe this as equation 2 and uh, uh, let us call this as equation um, 3 maybe ok. So, this is equation 3 and then uh, we can write this as sum over p uh, n p plus. Uh, so, n p plus minus uh, our uh, number densities Uh, in and and opposite uh, to B. Okay, so NP plus is uh, in the direction of B and NP minus is opposite to the direction of B. So this can be written as NP plus NP minus. Uh, this is uh, uh, and uh, then it's a p square over two m and then there is a mu B and then N plus uh, minus N minus and uh, this is the uh, total number of or the total energy of the system and um, where n plus and n minus can be written that is the total number of electrons uh, fermions pointing in the direction of b and n minus is opposite to the direction of b and one can write down n plus minus to be equal to 4 pi v by 3 h cube um, and you have uh, 2 m uh, epsilon f plus minus mu b uh, whole to the power 3 by 2. Uh, so, the plus will go with uh, uh, plus and the minus will go with minus and this equation you are aware of where we have gotten it from. So, we have uh, 0 to epsilon f 
and we simply have a g epsilon d epsilon and so this uh, uh, there is a g uh, plus and g minus corresponding to n plus and n minus. So, if you are uh, interested in knowing that what kind of uh, picture emerges. So, we have uh, p square over 2 m without any uh, field. So, we have up and down spins equally populated. So, this is say the Fermi energy. So, the number of up and down spins are same and it is a paramagnetic system without any um, external field and we are uh, measuring this uh, Fermi energy from the from the bottom say this. Now, what happens is that we have uh, the uh, in presence of the field we have uh, this situation and now you have the still the Fermi energy here. Now, this is up spin and this is down spin and because there are uh, more up spins than uh, down spins uh, we have an effective or rather uh, resultant magnetization of the system. So, that is n plus and n minus we have all defined uh, them. Uh, now, what we do is the following we write down the partition function. Uh, so, the partition function is written as uh, z n is equal to uh, n p plus uh, n p minus I have told what they mean and exponential minus beta uh, e n where e n is defined earlier. Uh, let us call this as equation maybe 4 and maybe this is 5 or rather 5 and 6 if you want because for n plus and n minus. Uh, so, this is uh, 5 and then we can call this as equation 6. So, what are the conditions on uh, n p? Uh, so, n p plus is equal to n p minus um, is equal to either 0 or 1 because they are fermions. and uh, so, we can write this as n p plus n p minus they can only take values 0 and 1. So, it means either 0 0 or 1 1 or uh, 1 0 and so on and so forth. And then uh, you have a n p plus uh, plus a n p minus sum over all p uh, this is equal to uh, n plus plus n minus equal to n. So, again plus and minus they mean that one that aligns uh, the number that aligns along the direction of the field and uh, minus uh, those which uh, uh, align uh, opposite to the direction of the field. So, we have a z of n uh, this is equal to uh, n plus is equal to 0 to n and uh, e to the power beta mu b uh, to n plus minus n and uh, this is uh, sum over all these n p. Uh, when I write this, uh, this combination or rather the second bracket it means it can take value 0 and 1. So, we have exponential minus beta uh, then we have a p uh, and a p square over 2 m uh, n p plus um, and uh, we have another one which is exactly the same thing for n p minus. Uh, which is exponential uh, minus beta p uh, p square over 2 m n p minus. Okay. So, that is the total partition function and um, uh, of course, this is subject to the condition that we have written above that is uh, summation over n p plus equal to n plus and summation over n p minus is equal to n minus. So, we this let us write this as equation 7 and this as equation 8 and uh, uh, we can introduce a sort of uh, partition function which is um, of those of uh, like spinless fermions say for example and um, uh, this is equal to uh, this is n p um, and uh, this is equal to an exponential uh, minus beta sum over p uh, p square over 2 m and n p. So, that is that is what we introduce this is just uh, and, and write this z in terms of z 0. So, uh, z 0 which uh, has say for example, n 0 number of particles. So, we can write it as exponential minus beta 
f 0 uh, n 0 uh, which uh, f 0 denotes the free energy corresponding to this n 0 number of particles which uh, denote the spinless fermions. So, z of n written in terms of uh, n 0 uh, let me keep uh, numbering these equations because when we need them it will be easier to define. So, 9 10 and this will be uh, so this is exponential minus beta mu b n and uh, there is a sum over n plus equal to 0 up till n and uh, we have exponential 2 beta uh, mu b um, beta is 1 over k t of course uh, mu b uh, n plus uh, and uh, z 0 which is n plus and z 0 which is n minus uh, but we write n minus as n minus n 0 plus because then we have uh, to worry about just one variable. Okay. So, that is the, the term that is outside the summation and then there are n plus summation over n plus from 0 to n and so on. And uh, your f 0 uh, n 0 that is uh, nothing. So, let us call it as 11 and this is equal to sum over n p this is equal to p square over 2 m and uh, n uh, p. Okay. So, uh, what we do is that we take a log of equation uh, 11 and divide by n uh, log of 11 and divide by n and this gives you 1 over n log of z n which is equal to minus beta mu b plus 1 over n uh, log of um, sum over n plus equal to 0 to n uh, exponential uh, 2 uh, beta mu b n plus minus beta uh, f 0 n plus minus beta f 0 n minus n plus uh, and uh, this is say equation 13. Okay. Now, uh, we have to uh, sort of solve this or rather compute this expression, but in order to do that let us uh, see this second term or rather the, um, the term inside the uh, argument of the log and there is a sum there right? and this sum will be dominated by the largest term in the sum okay? and say that happens for some n star uh, or rather n plus which is equal to n star. Okay, so, just write one line here that um, uh, this is uh, the sum in RHS is replaced by, by the largest term and uh, this uh, is uh, say this happens. happens for n plus to have some value which is n plus star. Okay. Um, and uh, how can we find this n plus star? So, what we do is that the take the uh, argument of the log and then uh, take a derivative with respect to n plus and then uh, put, uh, put that equal to 0 and uh, that would correspond to a n plus to have a value which is n plus star. So, this can be obtained as 2 mu b uh, minus uh, del f del n plus uh, this is of course a uh, function of this and then you have a n plus equal to n plus star uh, minus of del f 0 uh, n minus n plus divided by n I mean uh, taking a derivative with respect to n plus where n plus is equal to n plus star. So, uh, taking the largest term in the sum and trying to find the largest term you have to put uh, take a derivative and then put it equal to 0 and then that would correspond to uh, that n plus equal to n star. So, this uh, tells you that your mu uh, because del f del n is nothing but mu. Um, so, the chemical potential so, 
So, mu is equal to uh, so n plus uh, okay star right and um, minus mu and then you have uh, um, n minus n plus star um, and this is equal to 2 mu b. Okay. So, this equation has to be solved and let me see which uh, equation number should we be putting. So, this is 14 and this is 15. Okay. So, if you understand del f del n is nothing but mu the chemical potential and this is the equation that one has to solve. Um, so, this mu um, rather this uh, mu 0 is the uh, the chemical potential of this spinless fermions. Okay. And uh, now magnetization uh, can be obtained easily. Uh, which is nothing but m equal to uh, mu uh, and then you have uh, uh, this uh, n uh, plus star minus n um, uh, minus well I mean I do not have a n minus so we will write at n plus star. So, this this is not the chemical potential uh, that is why we have written it as a mu 0 mu is the magnetic moment. So, this is the, uh, the expression for that. Uh, so, there is another let me write it with uh, uh, so this that is the magnetization and uh, this can be uh, sort of written as uh, mu uh, 2 uh, um, n plus star minus n and let us call this as mu n and r where uh, r is uh, 0 less than r less than 1. So, r is equal to uh, you know 0 for uh, the magnetization that is equal number of up and down spins that is when happens when the uh, this is the situation the left side when equal number of up and down spins are there uh, and uh, when you have r to be finite uh, then you have a finite magnetization of the system. Okay. So, uh, for uh, b equal to 0 r is equal to 0. Okay. So, there are equal number of up and down spins and for small b uh, you have r uh, to be small okay. non 0 of course uh, and it is a small quantity. So, this uh, is important because we want to do an expansion of this uh, chemical potential about r equal to 0. Okay, and see that what you know emerges because the definition of susceptibility is that uh, the change in magnetization due to a change a small change in the field applied that is why we are talking about small r. So, uh, expanding about r equal to 0. So, we have a mu 0 n by 2 uh, plus 1 plus r by 2 n del mu 0 del x. So, this is the first term in the Taylor expansion and this is uh, at x equal to half you understand x equal to half means r equal to 0 and a minus mu 0 n by 2 uh, and then you have a plus 1 minus r by 2 into n uh, del mu 0 del x. Uh, x equal to half and that is uh, equal to 2 mu b. Okay. And of course, these two cancel and we are left with uh, linear in r expression and then r can be solved here r is equal to 2 mu b uh, this divided by del mu 0 del x uh, and uh, so this is a function of uh, uh, x n uh, where x is of course, is equal to this uh, thing I mean uh, this x is uh, same as your um, it is x is like uh, 1 uh, plus minus uh, r by 2. Okay. So, uh, if r is equal to 0 then it is half uh, uh, then you are expanding it about that okay. and we are simply uh, talking about you know uh, expanding it uh, about x equal to 0. So, this is x equal to 0. So, uh, sorry x equal to half we are uh, talking about expanding about x equal to half or r equal to 0. 
So, the low field susceptibility is given by which is what we wanted and um, we do not need to mention, but this is of course, at low temperature, but even room temperature is low temperature we know that or even much larger than room temperatures can be taken as uh, low temperature. So, this is equal to chi. So, this is equal to m by v b and this is equal to mu n r by v b which is equal to 2 uh, mu square n divided by this del mu naught uh, del x which is a function of x n and this is at x equal to half. And how do we calculate the denominator because that is the last thing that we need. So, mu 0 of x n that is the chemical potential is 3 x n by 4 v um, whole to the power um, 2 third um, h square over 2 m. Okay. So, uh, del mu 0 del x uh, I mean x n divided by del x uh, at x equal to half. Uh, this is equal to a cube root of 2 to the power 4 divided by 3, uh, 3 n by 4 pi v, 4 pi v uh, whole to the power 2 third and uh, h square over 2 m. Okay. So, that is your uh, del mu 0 del x uh, and that you can put it back into this. We have not been numbering equations. Uh, so, this is say 16 uh, and then uh, let us call this as 17 and maybe 18 and now we have uh, 19 and 20. So, we will put back 20 in 19 and uh, of course, your uh, epsilon f um, the Fermi energy for uh, the spin half system can be obtained as a 3 n by 8 pi v. We just have uh, put a degeneracy of 2, 2 s plus 1. So, this is h square by uh, 2 m. Uh, so, now uh, use uh, these uh, del mu x n del x and E f uh, in, uh, in this chi expression. Um, and then one can get a final expression for this. So, this chi 0 um, which is equal to 2 n mu square divided by 4 third uh, epsilon f this is equal to 3 by 2 n mu square divided by epsilon f that is the low field susceptibility, low field susceptibility. at t equal to 0. And if you really want a, a temperature dependence, then you can use this temperature dependence uh, of the chemical potential uh, which is mu at 0. So, this is nothing but equal to epsilon f. We have this the Sommerfeld expansion. We have used it earlier. So, the, the leading order change is k t by epsilon f whole square. Uh, and then uh, chi of t comes out as chi 0, 1 minus pi square over 12 and k t by uh, epsilon f whole square. Okay. So, that is the, uh, the correction to the susceptibility. So, this is the low, low field susceptibility uh, at uh, low temperature, uh, just the temperature dependence uh, comes from the t by t f whole square which is very different than the temperature dependence that we get at high temperature. Okay. So, this is the only, uh, uh, this is extremely small because you know k t at room temperature is about 0 0.0025 uh, electron volt whereas, epsilon f is of the order of 5 to 6 electron volt. So, there are uh, the and then you take a square of that and that becomes extremely small. So, chi uh, as a function of t uh, rarely or rather it is uh, experimentally uh, not possible to uh, determine the temperature dependence of this susceptibility and that is what the result that we get. Okay. So, remember the high temperature um, uh, form is, uh, uh, is 1 over T and uh, at low temperature at low field we get this value or rather this expression. Okay. So, that concludes our uh, uh, applications of the Fermi-Dirac statistics and uh, hopefully uh, unless 
something um, sort of comes up in between, we will be starting interacting systems from the next week onwards. Thank you. Thank you.